The title of message is Signs and Wonders Transfer of Wealth. Signs and Wonders Transfer of Wealth. It's very complicated, the title, but as I speak, you will understand. Let somebody say amen. amen. The wise men say, the person who pleased God, God gave him wisdom, knowledge, joy. But to the sinners, they gave the task of gathering, storing up wealth, so that they may hand it over to the one who pleases God. Amen. If you are here, you please God, let me say amen loud and clear. Amen. Without faith, you cannot please God. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 26. To the man who please him, God gave wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gave the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. I know there is somebody here, there is a sinner putting things together to hand over to you. Amen. They will hand over their wealth in your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it says, you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. The sinners that are gathering and storing up wealth to hand over to you, it will always take the works of God to compel them. God will force them to hand over wealth in your hand. But remember, it is not your work so that you can say, my power and my might do not say that my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. No. Remember the Lord your God. Don't forget the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth. That He may establish His covenant, which He saw to your fathers, it is this day. Power to get wealth he is the will of God for every child of God. Now every child of God must understand that. The will of God always work wonders when you understand the ways of God for you to get wealth. You cannot just get wealth without receiving instruction it will always take an instruction that will lead you to power to get wealth so i want to share a simple very simple strategy where you can experience power to get wealth without struggling number one the first thing you need to understand for you to get power to get wealth is the fear of the Lord. The fear of what? The fear of the Lord. David said from the book of Psalm 112, verse 1, New King James, Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fear the Lord. The man who fear the Lord is not cursed. The man who fear the Lord is blessed. Verse 2 says, his descendant will be mighty in the land of the living. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Then wealth and riches will be in his house. Wealth and riches is in the house of those who fear the Lord. Stress free. You fear God, wealth and riches will be in your house. What is in your house? There is always something in your house. What is in your house? There is always something in your house. There is always something in your house. The widow of the wife of the prophet said to Elisha, you know how my husband, your servant, saved you faithfully, but now he's dead. 
and we are in debt. The debtor wants to come and take two of my children to go into a slavery. And uh, I cannot afford to lose my two children. I've lost my husband, now I will be losing my two sons. The prophet asked him, what do you have? What do you have? She's a widow. She's in debt. But she has an empty bottle. An empty bottle. I have an empty bottle. The prophet said, well, borrow some more. That is the only place we can allow the anointing of borrow, borrow. Borrow some more bottle. And the little oil that you have, pour it in those bottles. When you have, fill the bottle, fill the jar, fill the pot with oil, then ask me, I will tell you what to do. They borrow some vessel and they put oil. And they all stopped because they did not put a lot of it anyway. They asked the prophet, what shall we do now? He said, well, sell the oil and pay the debt and the remaining of the money, help yourself. She had nothing physically. She had nothing physically, spiritually. She had nothing, completely nothing. But the little oil she had changed the situation in his house. Power to get wealth is for everybody when they understand the ways of God. It will not work for everybody when the fear of the Lord is not in the heart of somebody. Blesses the man who fear the Lord. His children will be mighty in the land. Wealth and riches is in the house of those who fear the Lord. Hallelujah. You can see from here that the blessings or power to get wealth is generational. As long as the father fear the Lord, his children will be blessed. If the children continue to fear the Lord, their children also will be blessed. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house. No wonder when you begin to see the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, you can point out that indeed these people, they fear the Lord. That's why they continue to receive blessings. But the case here will be a bit critical because Abraham became rich. When he died, he left everything in the hand of his children. But the person who benefited the more was Isaac. He received all the blessing from his father. But you know, the blessing that has been given to you and the one that you work for is completely different. The blessing that has been given to you, you will blow it. You will spend it any hour. But the one you are working for, you will learn to protect it. The blessing that was given to Isaac was finished. The proof is that there was a famine in the land. And it was, he wanted to go to Egypt. He wanted to go to Egypt because in Egypt, things are well. Things are flourishing in Egypt. Now, in the land he was staying, there was a problem. Genesis chapter 26 Verse 1. Now there was a famine in the land beside the previous famine in the Abraham time, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while. I will be with you and will bless you. I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendant, I will give all this land, I will make your descendant as numerous as the star in the sky. 
Why? Because Abraham, one person, obeyed the voice of God and did everything God required of him. Keeping the command of God, the decree of God, the instruction of God. These are the things that trigger to power to get wealth. Keeping the command of God, obeying the voice of God, the decree of God, the instruction of God will always usher you to power to get wealth. Now you need to understand that. God did not tell Isaac that the only way for you to prosper in this land where I said to you that I will be with you, I will bless you, is to plant. God never said those things. It was Isaac's responsibility to plant crops in that land. Every man who observes the wind will never sow. If you observe the cloud, you will never plant. Because the weather is giving a wrong message. It will rain. If you plant something, it will die. Don't focus on the rain. Don't focus on the rain if you depend on the faith. Nobody told Isaac what to do. But he used common sense. He saw his father planting. In all the time, it can be a critical time, it can be a good time. But this time, the land is critical. There is a famine in the land. Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year, reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Who blessed Isaac? The Lord. My friend, with that planting, do not expect, expect any kind of harvest. You are not planting, you're expecting harvest. No, it can never happen. It can never happen. The man, Isaac, became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Oh. If you see the story and the background of Isaac, this man is coming out of fire. Indeed, this is a financial deliverance the man received. He planted by faith, and God reacted. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. You will never become rich unless you fear the Lord. We just learned now from the book of Psalm 112 that the man who fear the Lord, wealth and riches will be in his house. And now we can see wealth and riches in the house of Isaac. What is the secret of Isaac? Number one, the fear of the Lord. Number two, is not for, focusing on the weather, is planting. In the critical time, is planting. Well, this will take me to tell you the five law of power to get wealth. Number one, law of power to get wealth, God supplies seed to the sower. Say it loud and clear. I cannot tell you. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, you will discover that God is up until now in the business of supplying seed to the sower. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 12, verse 10. Can be NIV, can be New King James. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Hallelujah. God never stopped supplying seed. Up until now, it is your responsibility to discover the seed and the harvest. He supplies seed to the sower, Bread for food. You will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. God can only multiply your seed when you are planting more seed. The five law of power to get wealth. Number one, 
There will never be a day in your life that you have nothing to sow. There is always something to sow. Number two, law of power to get wealth. Your seed is any tool God has given you to create your future. Whether you like it or not, 2018 is waiting for you. It is your responsibility to make 2018 pregnant. You must impregnate 2018. 2018 must be pregnant. You must be full of vision and dreams to see what God will do for you in 2018. If you leave it barren, believe me, 2018 will be barren. Your seed is any tool God has given you to create your future, number two. Number three, when you let go of what is in your hand, God will let go of what is in his hand. Very simple. You do not let go of what is in your hand, God will never let go anything at all. He has no part with you. There is nothing he will do for you. Something must leave your hand, then something must leave heaven. If nothing leave your hand, nothing will leave heaven. Number four law of power to get wealth, your seed is the only proof that you say you are not stingy and you have master greed. You are not a greedy person. That is the proof beyond your seed. Broken seed will always produce broken harvest. A complete seed will always produce a complete harvest. Law of power to get wealth number five. When you ask God for a harvest, God will stretch his hand to ask you for a seed. You want me to give you a harvest? Harvest of what? Give me seed. This is how it works. You bless somebody with a shade, you will get plenty of shade. What you sow, that is what you will reap. You bless somebody with word of encouragement, somebody also will come and give you word of encouragement. That is how it works. You bless somebody with shoe, oh, you get more shoes. Ask me, I will tell you. You bless somebody with money, that is exactly what will happen. Money must come back. But now, many of us, any time they bless somebody with money, money dry up. You know why? Number one, the person that you have given your money can be a very dry ground, is not fertile, is not productive. So you plant it in the wrong ground, that's why you dry up. Whosoever they may be, there are also people when you give them, you experience multiplication. Ask Isaac, he will tell you, the day my son fed me with a beautiful meat, the test was very beautiful. I bless him with dew from heaven. I told him, those who bless you shall be blessed, those who curse you shall be blessed. Those blessings came to pass in the life of Jacob. I told you, we say, Amen. Amen. Isaac had so many flocks and head and servant that the Philistine envy him. The Philistine did not plant anything, but they envy Isaac who work on the ground. King Abimelech came to Isaac and said, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. My friend, when I was planting, you were sleeping. You were dancing. You were eating. Now that I'm reaping, you are envy. 
you are jealous of me, you are chasing me away from your land, okay, let me go. They chased Isaac. And you know what? Isaac left the place. The Bible says from the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 25, Isaac went and built an altar in the place he went and called on the name of the Lord. The secret of Isaac is not in the farm, it's on the altar. First, number one, altar. Last time I was talking about repairing the broken altar. An altar is a place where you receive all round blessings. If you have a broken altar, you don't need to expect a lot from the throne of God. You must have a strong altar. So this was the secret of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Altar in place, call on the name of the Lord. He pitched his tent there, then Abimelech came. Abimelech followed Isaac there. He said, Isaac, Isaac said to Abimelech, why have you come to me since you ate me and have sent me away from you? Abimelech told him the truth. He said, you don't understand. We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we say, let there be now be an oath between us, between you and us, and let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm since we have not touched you and since we have done nothing to you but good and have sent you away in peace. You are now the bless of the Lord. People will see the final work when you are prospering. But when you are sweating, when you are planting, when you are praying, nobody's there, nobody can see. The main goal you need to know and to understand is that God must be with you. The person that will experience power to get wealth, God is always with them. God is always with them. It is my responsibility to do everything in my power to make sure God is with me. It is your responsibility to do everything in your power to make sure God is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning we learned that God is where? He's with us when we love one another. God is not with us when we do not love each other. Praise the Lord. Now, many people can take advantage about love. You use wisdom, the wisdom of God. Don't let anybody to come and despise you because we say love one another, then they will come and kiss you. Oh, that's very dangerous. They send you strange email. No, not like that. Not like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see that uh, God's still in the business of transferring wealth from the sinner to the righteous. The example is very simple. Uncle Laban. Uncle Laban have changed the wages of Jacob ten times. Jacob is a hard worker. He worked very hard, looking after the animal. Animal are animal. They don't say thank you. <laughs> you work very hard. They do whatever they want to do with you. Their business is only bear, bear, bear. Suddenly, Jacob heard Laban's son say, Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all his wealth from what belonged to our father. Somebody said, say this with me. The sinners, the sinners are, gathering are gathering for me, for me to, enjoy to enjoy wealth. These are the children of Uncle Laban. Jacob has taken everything. What do they say? He has taken everything. They forget that Jacob was working day and night. And Jacob had a blueprint of the secrets of this kind of prosperity that was transferred to him in his hand. 
what they are saying has gained all this wealth from what belonged to our father. They did not know the relationship of God and Jacob, Jacob and his father. His father spoke the word of blessing. As a result of what he did, we know that it was a crooked blessing that he took from his, bro his brother, but yet the blessing has still have to work for him. When he left his father's house, he left only with a staff, a rod in his hand. But we can see that things change. Anytime Uncle Laban will say to Jacob, the, spe the speckle shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckle. And if you say, the streaker shall be your wages, then all the flocks will bore streaker. Jacob said, God has taken away the livestock of your father and has given them to me. God has taken away the wealth of your father and has given them to me. Where did you learn these things, Jacob? I'm sure this message is the third or the, fifth, or the, the, third or the fourth time I'm bringing it across. Why? Well, I heard the Holy Spirit telling me, go back, teach this. Go back, tell them about this. I'm sure there is something somebody need to learn about this message. Jacob said, in breeding season, he's telling his wife, in breeding season, I once had a dream in which I look up and saw that the male god mating with the flock were stricken, speckled, or spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream. Many of us only see demons in the dreams. Many of us dreams are useless. Nothing come out of those dreams. The angel of God said to me in the dream, very soon you will come here and testify. The angel of God told me in the dreams. You will not tell us the story. I saw these demons in my dreams. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. The angel said to me in the dream, look up and see that all the male got mating with the flock as streaked, speckled, or spotted. For I've seen all that Laban has been doing to you. Praise the Lord. I want to go back because every one of us have dreams. And God still speaking in the dreams. God gave me a lot of dreams and vision. It was confirmed by one of the prophets, Prophet Ethrod. He came and began to prophesy to me. He told me a lot of story. And he told me a lot of dreams, a lot of vision. But he was afraid to say, you will be a future prophet because of the protocol that was around. And I understood that. And I will not blame him. There are three dreams. Dreams of man, dreams of God, and dreams of demons. I met somebody in Western Union who was counting money. I said to him, your dream must be counting money all the time. <laughs> he said to me, the last time I counted my own money was when I sold my own car. That is the only time I counted my own money. Everyone that is working in the bank, if you always count money, 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 when you sleep, you have dreams of counting money. It's not your money. You are still working in your dreams. That is the dream of man. It has nothing with a spiritual implication. Let me say amen. Amen. If you're a policeman, you don't like Nigerian, you don't like Congolese, you always dream of arresting them. That is your own dream. It's got nothing with spiritual things or God or demons. That is you. Amen. Amen. If you love your food, even in your bedroom you have some chips, you have some uh, apple. In your bedroom, next to your bed, you are eating, you sleep, you are eating. That is not demon feeding you. You yourself, you do extension of eating. <laughs> so your mind's still working. That is the dream of man. It's got nothing to do with God, with demons. Amen. Amen. Then you have the dreams of demons. That is very bad. I will not explain any of them because I'm not interested. When you sleep, you are fighting. <laughs> 
then your wife said to you, honey, honey, what's happening? <laughs> that is demon where is fellowshipping with you. And you worry when you wake up. You say, ah, I wish it was physical so I can beat them very well. <laughs> The problem is pray some more. Amen. Amen. The spirit beyond those bad dreams is say, cancel them. Fight them in the art of prayer. Don't take it lightly. Don't just wave your hand and say, ah, that was a dream. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Then we have the dreams of God. The dreams of God, you find it. Joseph had a dream. The angel said to the Lord said to him in the dream, leave this place, go to Egypt. He left. Because the Lord was hunting Jesus as a baby. We have the dreams of Joseph. Joseph had a dream. I saw the sun, the moon, the star bowing down to me. It came to pass physically. We have the dreams of Solomon. He offered a thousand men offering. God visited him in the dreams. Ask whatever you want, I will give it to you. And he said, give me wisdom and knowledge. God gave him more than that, that the dreams of God. By the special grace of God, I had a dream for somebody in this church. I see you counting a lot of money. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that it will manifest physically in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I had another dream, good dream. I saw orange, nice orange, very big, very vitamin, very mafuta ready to eat. It was not green, it was yellow. Beauty, I can't see it now, I can't see it now. If it is yours, let take it and take your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, I'm seeing these blessings and I pray that it will come to pass. There's another vision I saw. I saw a lot of mud, a lot of mud, a lot of mud. And I was wondering, I said, hmm, mud is a case. Why? So the moment I put my footstep there, there was a nice highway, nice road, no, no mud, no whatsoever, so I began to walk. I believe it must be somebody here, you are crossing your head in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. Hallelujah. This month of November, you will shout with a shout of joy in Jesus' name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. These are the dreams that will make you to keep going because it's good dreams. It must come to pass. I pray again for somebody, your good dreams shall come to pass in Jesus' name. I, Jacob, received the secret of prospering in the dreams. He had nobody to fight for him. You cannot fight your uncle, Uncle Laban. Oh, very crooked man. This man depend only in divination. He told Jacob, uh, if I'm prospering, I'll learn by divination that is because of you. Look at this kind of fellow. He never said it by the Holy Spirit, but by divination. He was a wrong man with a wrong fellow. God showed him what to do in the dreams. Raise your voice right where you are. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. appear to me appear. physically and spiritually, physically. even when I'm sleeping. Show me what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. What are the proof that this person is experiencing power to get wealth? The presence of God in your life. The presence of God in your life determines your success. This is the way I put it. I will encourage people that are not yet married, you listen to me carefully. If you want to take a decision to get married, pray very well. It's a very good decision. But think about this. If you marry somebody that is unsuccessful, you will spend the rest of your life, what? Unsuccessful. If you marry a successful person, you will spend the rest of your life, what? successful. Did you hear what I just said to you now? What kind of man will you marry? What kind of woman will you marry? Marry that fellow that is not successful but is full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Somebody that is full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, he is a successful man. I thought you would say amen loud and clear. 
Praise the Lord. The signs of wealth in your life is the presence of God in your life. If God is with you, who can be against you? Whatever you will do when God is with you, it will prosper. God was with Isaac. He saw in the land of famine. He prospered. The same year, he reaped a hundredfold. The same year. This year is not yet out. We're still in 2017. There is a seed that you will sow that will make you to prosper this year in the name of Jesus. You will become rich and your riches will continue to grow until you become very wealthy. We stop prospering when we stop sowing. When we stop giving, we also stop everything. But the more we continue, if the cloud are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. What are the signs that this person is a wealthy person? What are the signs that this man is experiencing power to get wealth? Abimelech said to Isaac, God is with you. I came to make a covenant with you, covenant of peace. I don't want you to trouble me in the future. Hallelujah. The proof that power to get wealth is in your hand is when Uncle Laban came and said to you, I've learned by divination that if God has prospered me, it's because of you. Because God is with you. Potiphar said to Potiphar prosper because of Joseph. And God was with Joseph. These are the signs that this man is a wealthy person. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 23. Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 23. If you can see, read it with me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Who's speaking? The Lord Almighty. Who's speaking? The Lord Almighty. Who's speaking? The Lord Almighty. In those days, ten men from all languages and nations will take firm out of one Jew by the aim of his robe and say, let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Can you see that? Can I have one person here on the altar? Somebody, come quickly. Any volunteer, come. Any man, come. Wonderful. God bless you, my son. Can I have 10 people? Come. 10 people, come. You stand here. Can everybody see this, this gentleman? 10 people, come. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10. Come here. Come here quickly. It's only three. You don't hear. Come beyond, the, beyond this man. I have only four. I need 10 people. Okay. Every one of you, hold him here, hold him. Not don't hold this one, hold him. Every one of you, make sure you hold him. Let us make sure we are 10. How many have we here? Uh, we are seven, three more. We need three more. Three people, come on. Wonderful, hold him, hold him, okay. Listen to me. This fellow, God is with him. Now, I will ask them a question. Why do you follow this guy? Why are you holding this guy? You didn't hold him? You hold him? Yes. Every one of you, did you hold him? Yes. Can you try to lift him up slowly? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But you must not be in front of him. You must be behind him. Okay, hold him there. Beautiful. You know what I like from this guy? He's completely different to all of them. He's completely blue here. Amen. Amen. Now, these people, I will ask them a question. Why do you follow this guy? Say it loud and clear. Because God is with him. I cannot hear you. God is with him. God is with him. Yes. That means he's a what? A successful person. Now, 
You see, the anointing is transferable. The moment they follow him, them also they begin to prosper. Then 10 people again will hold this one. 10 people will hold this one. 10 people will hold this one. How many of them? So what do you think when God said to Abraham, all nations will be blessed through you? Can you see that? God bless you. Thank you. Now, I'm turning to you. All of you here, very soon, before you come in this church, 10 cars will be parking, waiting for you to take them here in this church in the name of Jesus Christ. When you go out there, they will say, we know you, our neighbor, but you have changed. The only change we can see here, God is with you. You will take us where you are going in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If 10 of them will follow you, say amen loud and clear. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please close your eyes by your head. You are here, you say, Dr. Shiko, pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Wonderful. That will be a very good decision. Power to get wealth will affect you only if you give your life to Jesus. You must be born again. Raise your hand anywhere you are. You want me to pray for you. I will lead you into the kingdom of God. Wonderful. God bless you, my brother. Uh, God bless you, my daughter. Please lay a hand on brothers, brothers on brothers, sister on sister. Lay a hand on this fellow quickly. Thank you. Thank you. You want Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. Can you please, Asha, evangelist, lay a hand on the fellow. Pastor, move quickly. Lay a hand on the fellow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, say this with me. Mostly you that have raised your hand, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive, all Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Come. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. Please introduce yourself and speak, tell the church for how many years or for how long you've been at CFC Push. My name is Mahobani Zungo. I came for the first time to CFC Push in 2010. That is when we're still living in KwaZulu Natal. So we just relocated uh, in 2015 back to Johannesburg now. Yes. Ah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. You can go ahead with your testimony. Yes. I just wanted to glorify God for favor and elevation in my life. I've received an appointment letter from the Minister of Health, Aaron Mutualedi, to belong to a committee. That committee is called National Inquiry of maternal death in South Africa. So basically, is to try and improve the health of women in South Africa. Normally, there is one person who gets appointed per province, and I got appointed for Gauteng province. Hallelujah. Let's clap for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yours is coming. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what advice can you give to the viewers and the people in the church? Uh, my advice would be that, um, you know, when we have a prophet and a man of God in the house, we need to listen to them and their teachings. And if they say to us, we must pray, one of the things men of God said at the beginning of the year is that we will move from glory to glory. And I really believe that this appointment is, is proof that we are moving from glory to glory. As Hallelujah. Well. We are moving from glory to glory. Amen. Thank you, my sister.